Hello, welcome to October. I'm Alexi Nicole, live my life by design. This is another month of real estate. It may be combined with last month, I don't really know, but uh, it's raining and I am still out showing Brittany houses. So she should be here in a few minutes. Let's go inside this one and take a look. Welcome home. Immediately have your kitchen to your right. Looks like we have a little coat closet here. Yes. Your living space. Fireplace. Needs a little bit of paint, but that's an easy fix, right? At least the kitchen is semi updated. Can I just close that door? Semi updated, got granite countertops. The cabinetry could be newer. Your refrigerator would be right here. I'll show y'all the outside of the house when we're leaving. Let's go down this hallway and see what they have for bedrooms. Have a full bath, one sink, medicine cabinet, shower tub. Tub needs to be cleaned. Linen closet. Okay. We have a bedroom. Carpet looks almost new, like they just replaced it recently. Closet. Then we have another bedroom. Bedroom sizes aren't bad. Standard. Closet. The paint color is kind of like a peachy looking tan. It's, it's, I mean, it's neutral, I guess. I don't know if it's my favorite paint color. Here's the primary bedroom. Brittany's not gonna be a fan of this. <laughs> I already know that. And then, toilet and tub. Let's see what this closet has to offer. Okay, walk-in closet. And that's it. Let's go see if I can find the backyard. Did you see that, Al? Like on this neighbor's things? I thought it was real for a second. I was like, that is very weird and random. I, I, I wonder what's going on with the fence. It has these pieces like covering up. I don't know. That's weird. Weird. Happy Sunday, October 3rd. I am out house shopping, like always. We're going with two clients today. Um, Brittany, still looking for a property for them. This house is cute. And then um, Jasmine, who I just onboarded the other day, she will be doing virtual showings because she is in Florida, moving to Houston. So just waiting for Brittany to get here. And then we have two or three properties to look at and then Maybe a couple to look at for Jasmine as well. Good morning. Today is Monday, October 4th. Um, I am currently pumping out three offers for um, Brittany this morning. One had to be submitted by 2 p.m. today. We actually submitted this offer on Friday before we viewed the home yesterday. Um, and the agent sent out a mass email saying that um, the sellers would be expecting um, highest and best offers before 2 p.m. today. So when we went to see the home yesterday, they really liked it. 
So we had originally offered 205000 and they decided to up it $3,000 more. So the offer price is $13,500 above asking. They're asking one ninety four five, and we're offering two oh eight. So, y'all, this market, no games being played. Okay. Um. So, fingers crossed, prayers up, that something comes through. And then I have two other homes that we viewed yesterday that they um liked as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and submit offers on those. Um, and then I have some virtual showings to do for um, a buyer that I just onboarded. Her name is Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine, if you're watching, shout out to y'all on the YouTube that slide in my emails and my DMs and let's get this done, okay? Um, yeah, so we have three virtual tours to do with Jasmine today. They're going to be in the spring area where I live in Houston, um, and then I leave tomorrow for a week of vacation. Vacation. <laughs> it's supposed to be my last vacation of the year. So I'm like, oh, like this is such a, it's, it's just, it's just hard to leave in the mist. And then, um, I got a long flight too. So hopefully they have Wi-Fi on board. We'll see. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I'm just trying to tie up whatever, you know, loose offer ends that we have going on and try to get anything submitted um today if jasmine likes any of those i um, mean then i will just have to tag my mama like sis i need a little help next year the goal definitely is to onboard a showing assistant or showing coordinator um and then i already have the transaction coordinator just just to make this easier because I can still y'all know I can still do a lot of work while I'm away from the computer but it's still a vacation who really wants to work like that much on their vacation but you got to get done what you got to get done so that's that's that it's 10 o'clock I have actually somebody to call right now Bye. talk about an entryway look at this staircase y'all wow wow okay We've arrived at house number three for Jasmine. All of these homes that we're looking at today are a little bit older. Um, they are all built in the 70s, but they have lots of character on the inside. Good, good, glorious Tuesday, okay? We are giving God all the glory and praise this morning. Um, we are also giving my father in heaven. Today is his birthday of praise and thank you this morning. They knew I needed a win, right? <laughs> like... They knew. Uh, I just got a call from a listing agent for one of the houses um, that Brittany and Jeremy liked. We won the offer, y'all. Oh, God. We had eight. Uh, the, he received 18 offers. 18. We submitted two different offers, too. I hadn't even told y'all that. So we've been doing this program with Brittany. It's called Ribbon Cash, right? I don't have the time. I'm just really excited to, to even really explain it. But basically, they can turn your finance offer into a cash offer. I'll go into details about this later. Um, so, we submitted a ribbon offer, cash of 200000 The house was um, 194.5 was their asking price. We submitted the ribbon cash offer for 200000 basically, and no other real contingencies, you know, nothing. And then we also submitted a regular FHA offer of 213. Oh no 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 208. 13,000 above their asking price. They chose our ribbon cash offer. I haven't even gotten a chance to tell Brittany all of this because she's probably asleep because she works overnight. I just called her, she didn't answer. So hopefully she calls me back soon. I am just over the moon excited because they really liked this house. It wasn't one of them that was like, eh, you know, oh, it's okay. They truly like this one, and that just brings me joy to know that, you know, they have the opportunity to get a home that they actually really like. Um, whew. Okay, I'm excited. And then I also submitted an offer last night for one of the three homes that um, I went and looked at yesterday morning for Jasmine that is in Florida. Um, we looked at three. She liked all three of them, honestly. Um, the first one that she wanted to do a offer on, um, 
it was in a flood zone and not like a 500 year flood zone a 100 year flood zone like an area of Houston that floods you know if it rains for the entire day so that was kind of sad because they hadn't received any offers and we were just gonna slide right on in there and get that so once I told her it was in the flood zone her and her husband um, talked it out and they decided no but they decided to submit an offer on another house which I actually know this listing agent so it's always nice when the other agent on the other side of the contract you actually know like we used to be in the same brokerage together so you know we have a little rapport i'm not gonna say like you know we're great friends or anything but you know rapport is better than no rapport right so we submitted that offer last night that house asking price was 270. we submitted an offer of 280 asking for 10,000 back towards um, seller contributions, right? And I've explained this in the past, but I know there's a lot of you all that are new to the channel. Um, so basically it's like you're giving them t an additional $10,000 on the front end and then on the back end, they put $10,000 towards your closing costs. So what this does is it helps balance out the amount of money that the buyer is gonna come out of pocket with, out of pocket for, for the closing of the home. Brittany, oh uh, not Brittany, sorry. Jasmine was considering doing um, down payment assistance, which is a wonderful program, but if we can get the seller to give that money instead of you having to get down payment assistance, which will increase your interest rate, why not do it that way, right? And then, you know, just whatever other contingencies. We didn't really ask for much. We asked for them to pay title and survey. We didn't ask for any home warranty. Um, and then that $10,000 uh, cash at the end, but it, it all balances out because she was asking 270 for the house. We're offering to pay 280, and then she gives us our 10 back at the end. So it still all balances out the same as far as the seller's net sales, and it just helps the buyer's pocket. I always try to explain this in the most simple way that I know how, but it always still sounds so confusing. So I'm waiting for a response on that offer that was sent pretty late last night, like at uh, 8:30 p.m. So when I spoke with the listing agent, you know, she's going to do her due diligence, call the lender, you know, make sure that the buyer's, you know, good, and then talk to her client about it. And hopefully we can just get that offer accepted today as well. Um, my energy is super high, one, because I'm excited, and two, because I am on my way out of the United States to a different continent today. I have a flight that leaves at 4 p.m., and I would love... <laughs> which probably won't happen. But I would love to have all these contracts executed and sent out to the right people and things put in place. I know that's not gonna happen. So once I'm done talking to y'all, I'm gonna get on the phone with Valerie, um, the transaction coordinator company that I use and just reel her in on these because I'm gonna need help. Um, definitely gonna need help. So I'm just happy. like. I, I literally prayed. I was like, I really need these people to get under contract before I leave. <laughs> you know, like, <sighs> before I leave. And it, it, I feel like the good Lord, Daddy, and everybody else, all the energies, whoever you out there praying to, I feel like it's going to get done. Whew. Anyways, let me get on the phone with Valerie. That's just a little update for y'all. I didn't tell y'all what day it is. Today's October 5th. Tuesday, October 5th, y'all. All right. Hello vlog beauty vlog happy october 7th i'm on vacation but of course i must update y'all two clients under contract between yesterday and the day before so we finally got Brittany under contract executed done and then jasmine we got under contract yesterday super excited about that um <laughs> i'm here in santorini and pretty much all of last night I was working, getting emails sent, documents sent, just making sure that, you know, we get just under contract smoothly and everything is where it needs to be. So I'm happy about that. Um, the time difference is about eight hours. I'm eight hours ahead here in Santorini. So normally when I travel and I work, it's okay because the time difference isn't that huge. So this is kind of stressing me out a little bit, just making sure that, you know, I'm able to check emails, talk to people, you know, just be awake when my clients are awake at home and everybody else is awake. So we're gonna see how I balance that out. 
But other than that, I'm excited. So it's Thursday today, right? Yes, it's Thursday. Um, Brittany's inspection should be tomorrow. Jasmine um, will be getting all of her instructions from my transaction coordinator today about sending off earnest money and starting to get things um, done. So one thing that I didn't mention, um, I'll have to go back and show y'all the house that Jasmine is getting. I don't think I showed that one in the vlog when I went and did the virtual tours for her. Um, so what are the details? I'm trying to think. The S oh yes, I told y'all. So we offered 280 with 10,000 back. The she countered back with um, 280 with only 5,000 back, and we I was like, now why would we do that? When you're asking prices 270, we're still giving you full price. So we counted back with 275 and 5,000 back. Um, and so she agreed on that. And then the listing agent then tells me that, um, you know, the inspection is just for peace of mind. The seller doesn't plan on giving anything. She's, she's selling it as is. And normally, like, if that is the intent, they will put that in the MLS under the agent remarks. So we'll know in advance that this seller does not plan on contributing towards renovations or repairs or anything that might need to be done to the home so that kind of irks me a little bit that she wanted to tell us that after the fact like usually you you want to like give a heads up like let somebody know that beforehand before you really go into contract and do all of that but it's okay hopefully the inspection uh, once we do the inspection everything will come back just fine and we won't really need to go into negotiations over repairs or renovations um but we'll see like I told Jasmine, I was like, we're not going to pay a lot of option money. We only did $100 for seven days. Um, so just in the event that we can't come to an agreement and she really doesn't want to give any money if we need anything, then it's only a $100 loss and then we'll just find another home. But hopefully that's not what happens. I don't, you know, hopefully that's not what happens. Hopefully everything just works out wonderfully. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at with everything. Travis, um, what's going on with Travis? Oh, uh, Travis should be doing his final, no, Travis should be doing his walkthrough, um, next week. So we have the inspector going out this week, Friday to do, um, the final inspection and then, in the next upcoming days, he'll do his first walk um, and all of that. Unfortunately, I won't be there for that because I'm here, but you know, I gotta live my life a little bit too. So that's that. And then when I get back, um, will be his closing day. So, yay. Good evening. It is, I think today is the 8th or the 9th. Today is the 8th, Friday, October 8th. It's like 11.40 p.m. Santorini time, like 3.40 um, Houston time. I just got off the phone with Brittany. Um, we had her inspection yesterday. We got the report. Um, so I had to give her a call, obviously, when the time was good for, for her, not like in crazy hours. Um, anywho, yeah, the um, inspection actually came back pretty clean for the most part. And the house is built in the 90s. Don't give me the line about the exact year. So it's, you know, it, it has some age to it for sure. So I was expecting a few um, other things to just like really be wrong with it. But for the most part, it just has like some GFCI um, electrical issues, which is just, just the outlets. You know, those are easy fixes, easy changes. The dishwasher isn't working. Um, that might have something to do with the electrical outlets. Um, so we're gonna, definitely going to have them look at that. Um, the water heater has some corrosion and just like very common things going on with that. But pretty much everything else was good. There's little itty bitty things here or there, like the garage door, like the entrance door from the garage to the house um, isn't the right amount of thickness. So we're going to see if they're going to be willing to do something about that. And really, really, really and truly just really small, minute things. So 
Um, really happy about that. Um, the other house that Brittany was hoping to hear back from, I had to um, text the agent today for an update. Because, you know, when, when these agents get these multiple offers, I guess it's just hard for them to respond to everybody else and tell them that they didn't get the offer, which is not really that hard, but they didn't do that. So I sent him an, a text and he told me somebody else got the offer, which I kind of figured, but you should at least, you know, tell somebody. Um, anyways, so that's that. She did drop off her earnest money today. Um, earnest and option fee to the title company. But it seems like there was a confusion with the address of the escrow officer on the account. So she took it to one title company but that's not the actual title company that has our file. It's the title company's address on the contract, but that's not the actual address that she's working out of. I don't really know. So Brittany dropped it off today and then we emailed them for the receipt and they were like, well, we don't have it. And Brittany's like, well, I dropped it off. So we had to figure that out. Um, and we just figured out, you know, just, there was just a mix up of address. I don't know whose fault it is. It really doesn't matter. The title company is gonna have a courier send the funds to the correct title company. So that's good because those funds are due, due today. You know, earnest money is due within the first three business days of the contract. So we wanna make sure that that is all good. Travis had his inspection this morning. So hopefully we'll get that inspection report back tomorrow. And I will find some time <laughs> to review that one and then same thing for jasmine she's getting her inspection done tomorrow as well and we gonna find some time to review that one as well um but that's pretty much it y'all um yeah that's all the updates i have for y'all so when we get the other two inspection reports back i'll let y'all know how those go fingers crossed good night <laughs> it's Sunday, October 10th, 4 a.m. Santorini time. I guess it's about, what, 9 p.m. Eastern time-ish, something like that. Anyways, I just woke up a little while ago. And now I am going over the inspection report for Travis. I just sent the email. Actually, pause. Let's go back. Um, first, uh, yesterday, or... I don't know, whatever, hours ago. <laughs> Last night, really, Brittany and I went over her inspection report and um, I sent that amendment to the listing agent. Um, I think I talked to y'all about this. There wasn't much on there that was really alarming. It's We have a list of 10 things that we sent to have request requested for repairs. The attic had a lock on the outside of the door. Um, we asked to remove that. That's a safety hazard. Um, the stairs to climb into the attic um, were just like loose and not secured. So we asked them to um, have that reinforced. The door leading from the garage into the home is not the correct type of door. It's supposed to be a certain amount of thickness um, to prevent fire hazards and, you know, things like that. So we've asked, and then it doesn't have the right type of hinges either that allows the door to self-close. So we've asked for them to update that. Um, the fireplace where you turn for the gas to turn on and stuff doesn't have the actual key in there to turn on the gas. So we asked them to have the key installed. Um... GFCI receptacles, um, the outlet plugs all the time, y'all. You know, when you kind of press it, it has the two buttons to press to kind of like restart it or whatever. All the house, most houses, I'm not going to say all, most resale houses always kind of have issues with those. So we've asked them to um, have a professional electrician come out and repair those or fix those. Um... One of the bathrooms had a leak at the tub spout, so we've asked for a professional plumber to come fix that. Um, the drain pan in the attic attached to the, I believe, the air conditioning condenser thing um, is old and rusted, and it just needs to be replaced. Um, oh, there is 
a um, drain pipe on the exterior of the home that is not connected to the other pipe so it's just kind of like pointless so where in your house should be draining water into certain directions so it won't ruin your roof and the rest of your home like when it rains and things like that um they just need to you know have that corrected um, the water heater doesn't consist of a sediment trap. Sediment trap, we see these in all the um, inspection reports here lately, too. That's just another safety feature that needs to be um, added back if it was never there or whatever the case. The dishwasher is not working. That may just have to do with the electrical outlets with the GFC. The G <clears throat> that may just have to do with the electrical outlets. Like I said, the GFCIs. Um, so some were inoperable, so we're going to have them either, if that is the issue, fix that or figure out what's going on with the dishwasher. And then the electrical panel outside, he couldn't access because it had a um, padlock on it. So we've just asked him to remove the padlock. Some of these things, technically, we could say, hey, we need to do a reinspection. Reinspection fees like $150. Normally, if the home was not accessible because of things like the seller did, like this electrical panel, things like that, we could ask for them to pay for it. But um, I don't know. We'll see what, what happens. I just sent this off. So we'll see what they say in regards to this, and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Now I want to put y'all down. Oh. Okay. Now it's time to go over Travis' report. Um, <laughs> my Wi-Fi here is like not the best. Usually like if I leave the room and go downstairs, it works pretty well. But like I said, it's four o'clock in the morning here. And I don't, there's nobody else outside and I wanna get kidnapped. <laughs> But it looks like I might have to because it's not loading how I need it to load. Um, this is new construction. Normally with new construction, you just literally send the report to the builder and they will touch everything that's on the report just to make sure it's, you know, solid. So I'm definitely just going to forward it to the builder, but I also want to review it so I can give Travis a call um later today to talk about it just you know make sure he's comfortable with everything but his um final walk is next week thursday and i'll be back home for that so that'll be good um yeah i was gonna go over this with y'all but it's not pulling up so i'll have to do it later um i should also be getting jasmine's report back hopefully today um and then i'll be able to um, go over that later with her, which, I don't know, that one kind of has me on edge a little bit, I'm not even going to lie, but hopefully it all works out for the best. Um, that's it, y'all. That's all the updates that I have. I'm about to try to go back to sleep for like another couple of hours, then I'm going to go get on the yacht. Bye. <laughs> hey, y'all. So, unfortunately just like I thought the inspection for Jasmine's house came back and it is not awesome <laughs> it is the opposite um, it's 47 pages and pretty much everything is deficient except for like the HVAC system so she must have just recently had that replaced but I mean everything else on this report is deficient let me show y'all so when you look at an inspection report it this is what they look like right um, and it just goes section by section like this like so so at the top of each page it gives you a little thingy that's, you know, did they inspect it, not inspected, not present, and deficient. So it was inspected and it's deficient. Most of everything is like that. And once again, this is an older home, 1970 something. So of course you don't expect it to be perfect.
but there's just there's foundation issues their base the home basically needs a new roof the deck in the backyard which is massive and really nice um, but it's old like the wood is just rotten um you know just just a lot you know just it's a lot plumbing issues uh, electrical issues just all of the above so this home is being sold as is i think i mentioned they told us that after the fact which irritated my soul but they told us after the fact so we're not even gonna try to negotiate on this um after the conversation jasmine and i had she said you know they just want to go ahead and terminate the contract um request for the release of their earnest money back remember that that is a part of the process you still have to pay your option fee and your earnest money and then you know we get to a certain time point time period that we have to terminate the contract to get our earnest money back and that's where we're at with this now their option period ends on the 13th um right now it is the 10th in houston so we're gonna go ahead and send this and i'm gonna send this entire inspection report to the agent so when they put this back on the market they do have to disclose all of this information to whoever may want to be purchasing this house next um, just so they can see because in her email she was like the home is in perfect condition the seller didn't have any issues while living there and clearly it's it's not in perfect condition and no home is ever going to be in perfect condition not even a new construction but this is far 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 from um even good condition honestly like this is almost I would almost even consider this a rehab house not aesthetically but just like electric plumbing all of that at roofing foundation all of that needs to be redone on this home so anyways gonna send that email terminate the contract release earnest money when I get back home gonna hit the ground running again and start looking for more houses and that's that all right y'all i am back in the united states of texas <laughs> um and yeah hitting the ground running with work hey siri pause tv um sorry not listening would you mind setting one of those aside for me okay there she go so literally as soon as i walked through the door um, Travis was calling me with some concerns. We have his closing this Thursday, and um, I was out of town for his walkthrough, his blue tape walkthrough, and his inspection. But we did send the inspection report over, and I told y'all that. But the builder called him today to let him know that they were actually going to be redoing his driveway. Um, the builder just, uh, when I spoke with him, he just said that. It didn't look good, you know, just, it, it didn't look good. All the next door neighbor's driveways, you know, looked leveled and, and, and looked, I don't know, I didn't see it, but he just said he just didn't feel like it looked good. Um, so he's having that redone. And then also um, the flooring in one of the powder baths or bathrooms in the home, he's having redone as well. Um, because I think he I think he said that wasn't, that wasn't leveled or something like that. So Travis called me concerned that, you know, those things wouldn't be done by Thursday. Um, so I just called the builder just to kind of talk it through and, you know, see exactly what was going on. Cause you know, playing telephone about things like that can just kind of be confusing. So I wanted to talk to the builder directly, especially since I didn't get to see it for myself. Um, and so he said they've already, um, demolished the driveway they'll be pouring new concrete tomorrow and also the same thing for the, the bathroom um hopefully the bathroom people will be coming out and um they've already pulled up the bathroom floor so relaying um whatever float that they had down there and then he said the only thing that we might still be doing come thursday um when we do the final walkthrough is the bathroom they may just be laying the floor then um so it's just more of a just making sure that, you know, it wasn't anything going on where they wouldn't be able to move in the house and, and you know, just live. And then also on the inspection report, um, 
it spoke about the grading of the backyard and on the inspection report it also spoke about the grading of the backyard which basically means like how how the dirt is laid and like how it kind of dips and flows for water to like like when it rains so it won't just be sitting um it spoke about that but um and so they had a few concerns about that but that's really hard to tell like i, I say this about inspection reports all the time like <clears throat> or inspectors really you know if it if it doesn't look a hundred percent perfect they're gonna put it on the inspection they're gonna put it on the inspection report just basically to c y a just to say well, I told y'all, but there literally could be nothing wrong with it, and especially with something like that, like we don't know how the water is gonna flow in the yard and if it's gonna sit and if it's gonna puddle and you know all of that until it actually rains and it hasn't rained so if I I just told them, you know, if if that is the issue post closing, you have a, a one year you, <clears throat> you have a one year warranty with the builder um, for things like that. So I just told them to keep an eye on it, you know, and if it doesn't seem like the water is running off or how it's supposed to, then definitely call the builder uh, more immediately than later within that one year so they can come back in and and fix that. But other than that. <clears throat> Other than those things, right? Um, all is well. Um, what next? We went ahead and terminated the contract for Jasmine on that other house. Um, I believe she got her earnest money wired back to her today. Shout out to my transaction coordinator, y'all. Like, she has been so clutch while I was on these flights and out and about gallivanting in Greece without great Wi-Fi services. Um... So all of that has been taken care of. Jasmine just sent me a list of other homes that she's interested in. So I'm um, on my computer now, actually, um, looking through those and scheduling to possibly go out and view some tomorrow and the next day. So that's just a little update. Today is October 12th. Monday, October 12th, y'all. Yep. October seems busy. It's it 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 feels busy. <laughs> Before I forget to tell y'all this, so I don't I'm pretty sure, but like a week or so ago, more, like more, maybe two weeks, a week and a half, whatever. Before I left for a vacation, I had um connected with the new buyer that was referred to me. Her, her husband and I had went out and looked at a few properties and, um, you know, just didn't really like anything. And I had told them that I was, you know, going on vacation soon. Um, but if, you know, they saw any homes, just, you know, let me know and I can have um, my mom work with them or whatever the case may be. They're, they're a Jamaican couple. Um, so the day I was leaving, she takes me, oh, well... So we had a few days in between me leaving to actually go on vacation and we were supposed to be doing some house hunting in between them trying to get them under contract before I left. She ended up having a family emergency and um, had to leave to go back to Jamaica. Her grandmother passed away. Um, so she said she was putting her house shopping on pause, which totally understand, right? And then the day that I was leaving to go to Greece, she texted me that morning was like, hey, I found a house. I want to put a contract on. Um, I responded immediately because my phone is always, I'm, I always have access, whether if I have on my watch, which I don't have on right now, or just my phone. Um, I responded pretty immediately, um, and she just never got back to me after I sent the responding text message. Like, you know, what's the house? Do you want to go see it? You know, I'm still home for a couple of hours. Like, you know, I can fit it in, whatever it may be. Like, I like to be accessible to my clients. That's just, that's just what I am. And I mean, being accessible gets to the bag. Okay. It, it, it all, it works out for everybody. Two days ago, she sent me a message and said, hey, hun. Um, while I was out, we, uh, while I was in Jamaica, you know, my, me and my husband saw a house that we liked and he used another realtor to, um, to write the contract and blah, blah. She, and she apologized, you know, and said that she referred me to people. But this is just more of me telling, you know, if you intend on being a future realtor or whatever, this stuff happens all the time. You know, you, you put in the effort, you put in the work, you communicate, you can, you can do it all. And there will still be clients that, that will just go out and use someone else. And I, I think it's because 
I guess they just don't know how the process really works, you know, like, like how we make our money. Um, so, and, and that, like, anyways, anyways, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to assume what they were thinking or what he was thinking or whatever it may be. Um, if you just didn't think I was going to be available while I was gone, cause I stays available. I make sure that I'm available, but I had also specifically told them that my mother, you know, who is also a licensed Texas realtor, she taught me everything I know, you know, would be able to assist. And I would have just let her have the client. She could have paid me a referral fee. But anyway, so just want to throw that out there that not all clients stay. It's not always a win. But hey, I have two new buyer consultations tomorrow that was booked while I was in Greece. So you you win some, you lose some. That is the point of me telling y'all this right now. Okay, now let me schedule these houses for Jasmine. <laughs> Happy October 13th. It is a Wednesday. Ugh, where is this week gone? I guess, uh, I don't know. Um, I am headed out to tour about seven properties for Jasmine. Some we're gonna be on FaceTime, some will be on video because um, <laughs> he's working. So headed out to do that. Had um, two buyer consultations this morning with actually friends from mine from college. The first one, She's actually already under contract on a property, new construction, um, and, you know, she's a little confused, uh, just, you know, about the process, um, but I had to explain to her, like, you know, you, you've, you've contacted me too late, sis, <laughs> you've, you're already under contract, new construction is not going to let me come in after the fact, after you've signed the contract, pay your earnest money, and represent you as your realtor. Even though I am going to call them just in case to verify, but more than likely they're not since, you know, on the contract, it didn't state that she had a realtor, um, but who knows? We'll see. And then the second one is another, um, long time friend of mine and, um, her and her husband are currently in the lease and the lease will be ending next April. So she was, you know, just trying to find out, you know, what her options are as far as should she rent, should she buy? You know, and I've just kind of broke it all down to her and, you know, told them if they want to go the new construction right now, if they want to go the new construction route now is really the perfect time because it takes, you know, on average about six months to build a home, anywhere between really four to eight months, just depending on the builder and the size of the home. Um, so I'm going to get them onboarded and they're going out of town for vacation for a week. And so once they get back, we will start the home shopping process for them. Um, so yeah, y'all just busy, busy, busy and busy is a blessing. So I shall not complain. So let's go check out these houses. Good morning. Good morning. Today is closing day for Travis. Y'all know I love closing day. Um, but it's raining. Right now I'm headed to do his final walkthrough. 10.30, it's 10.08 right now. I need to stop and get him a bottle of red wine. I just text his girlfriend to see what he likes to drink. Um, his closing basket is in the trunk of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, headed to do that right now. And then also, um, we put in an offer for Jasmine yesterday. I did, I think I told y'all, 11 virtual tours for her. And her number one house, we went ahead and submitted the offer. They counter offered back this morning, so I'm actually about to call her now and talk about the counter offer. I'm gonna see if I can record on my iPad just so y'all can see like what that looks like as far as the counter offer and you know how would I how I advise her to move forward with the offer. It's actually pretty good, so it's really just all on the up and up. So let's do that so I can get that done and go do this walkthrough. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh my gosh, it's not Friday yet. It's, look, <laughs> I honestly, literally, I have no idea what day of the week it is this week. I'm just <laughs> still so thrown off from my vacation. I'm like, I feel like I repeated Monday twice because yeah. where I was was eight <laughs> hours ahead. So I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on, but I'm thank God for a calendar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, anywho, I'm calling because we got a counter offer on the offer. Okay, I assume we would. Yes, I did too. 
so basic and it, it's not bad um okay so let me read you what she said she says our sellers have countered with the below terms let me know if this works for you also i wanted to mention that we did receive a painting quote of seventeen hundred dollars for the first floor if the buyers are interested in that contact um our sellers are going through a divorce so we are aware that the home needs paint and some love Okay, so now, because wasn't it, I think it was the door to the, the primary bathroom that yeah. had a big old hole in it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe things just wasn't going that great over there. Yeah, um, not at all. Somebody was hiding somebody's phone in that room. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're good with the purchase price of 265000 The earnest money um is good for two thousand six hundred fifty dollars they did ask us to up the option fee to 150 for seven days so 50 more dollars mm -hmm. um and they're requesting for um the buyer to pay for the title policy which on the contract i said for the seller to pay they're requesting for the buyer to pay um usually it's about a little less than about one percent of the sales price of the home is what title usually comes out to be so if mm -hmm. you know if we just want to err on the high side, that would be about maybe two thousand dollars. But like I said, that would be erring way on the high side. Um, okay. And they're also saying we asked for them to provide a survey, and if they didn't have one, that they would pay for it. Um, she says she's just asking me to change a different box because they have one, um, but they just need to get it notarized, and they need a, a little bit more time, twenty-one days, because I gave them ten days. So that's not really a big deal. Okay. Um, and then they countered back with five thousand dollars of contributions instead of ten, which is what I figured they would do. That's why I asked yeah. for a lot because normally <laughs> they come back with less, and so I figured five thousand would be a, a good point. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And then she says, if all works for your client, we will have the contract da -da 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 today. Oh, and then she also says, I want to note that the HVAC system in the roof is new from 2019. So the big ticket items have been taken care of. It's mostly cosmetics. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yes. Um, okay. So the only thing I'm a little bit nervous about is the is it the title you know if that's two thousand and then the seller contribution is down to five mm -hmm. i'm just trying to do the math that's like down to three um mm -hmm. so yeah what do you think what do, what do you think about it um i honestly don't think it's bad because honestly when we get this inspection report back i plan on asking them to contribute some more money towards you know the cosmetic fixes and, oh yeah you know so we, we there's still definitely room to negotiate um and like i said title policy isn't too bad i need to speak with your lender to see if they give like any well no you have an fha loan right yeah yeah so they, they can't really give any credits towards fha um but as far as the numbers what i can do is i can send this oh send this over to your lender and have him send you um like a pre-closing document that will show you what you know that numbers will look like what you will be playing at closing etc then the white ones yeah. also like uh, It's a good sized pantry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just a little bit. Yeah. All right. I want to see some cute shadows. <laughs> right. This is a happy day. Right. Same day. Just post closing. Travis closing went great. Chick. Say hi to mom. I don't think y'all have seen mommy's new house. We're in the, the new house. Um, update. Brittany. What just happened with Brittany? Oh, the sellers are asking to push up the closing. 
and do a lease back because they're purchasing a new house contingent on the sale of their current house. We were supposed to be closing November 9th. They're wanting to push it up a week. Um, so Brittany responded and said, sure, but she wants to charge them for the lease back. They wanted a free lease back. So right now I am waiting for the listing agent to respond to that. Um, yep. Oh, and also she had to pay, um, about a little less than 300, no, a little less than 400 and something dollars for HOA resale certificate. Um, these are also things that are negotiable in the contract, but because we were really trying to win an offer, we negotiated that we would pay for HOA fees and necessary documentation. So she has to pay those funds. The sellers thought they had found it and emailed it, but it wasn't what the title company was requesting. So had to go ahead and pay that. So seeing as she had to pay that, she's wanting to recoup her money on the back end from the lease back so she's asking them basically for 45 dollars a day um we got that number from how much her mortgage would be her estimated monthly mortgage is 14.60 divided by 30 days gives you about 45 something a day they want a seven day lease back 45 times that equals three whatever so that's how that number came about all right check that's where we're at with Brittany. um and then jasmine after I spoke with her this morning about the counter offer, we um, got in contact with her lender, got him to do an estimated closing cost, and she's okay with that. So we made the necessary changes to the contract for the counter offer, and we just sent that off. So we should be getting an executed contract here within the next couple of hours. And that's it. That's all. All right. Bye. Mom, you have anything you want to update the vlog about? <laughs> Mom, tell the vlog what you got going on. Crazy title companies that can't close more than four <laughs> closings per day. I don't know in what world they live in, but yes, yeah, so I had to push one of my closings back from yesterday to next Monday. Um, another closing coming up on the 26th, but we have to do with the DR Horton, we have to do the walkthrough and the independent inspection so they can go ahead and make all the necessary repairs before we close on the 26th. I'm sitting here looking for homes for prospective clients. Wonderful. So everybody's booked and busy. That's what that means. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, all right. You know, and then let me plug Stepdaddy. If y'all know anybody that's looking for commercial real estate, I got you there too. All right, good afternoon. Happy October 16th. Here at the house, Anthony just inspected it. About to call Jasmine on FaceTime and just do a quick little walkthrough, y'all. So, and then I'll give y'all a tour of the house. All right, y'all. So we are inside. Anthony just left. And I was on FaceTime with Jasmine, who said we have a bit of a leak up here. Y'all can hear there are three dogs in the garage going crazy, but don't mind them. Um, the home needs quite a bit of just cosmetic work, paint, probably some fresh carpet, or maybe just a deep clean of the carpet. The carpet doesn't look horrible, but, you know. Um, living area, fireplace, dining table or breakfast table kitchen whatever you want to call it um and then have the go the kitchen i really like these countertops i was going to turn on the light but you can see it better like it has little specks of silver in there so it's really cute with the black backsplash um he said the dishwasher is not working so we'll have to get that looked at or figured out what you know we're gonna do about that um, here is a powder bath with storage closet and if y'all can see there's a hole in the sheetrock there so um, utilities garage with the crazy three dogs let me go back and show you all the backyard
All right. Not oversized, but you still got enough space to enjoy. This is a covered patio, so you can still come out here and live your best life. Okay, let's go back over here to where the primary bedroom is, downstairs. All right, it's a good size room. Closet, or just a linen closet. And then toilet sink, jacuzzi tub, shower, and then walk-in closet. It's a decent size. And I'm gonna show you all our favorite feature of this house are these stairs within the primary bedroom only that leads up to just like a flex space. Like how cool is this? They have it set up as a nursery here. Um, but for me, <laughs> when I showed Jasmine this house originally, I was like, this, I would turn this into my closet. No lie, like office slash closet. Would just like get some really good built-ins going on or whatever. Um, she just said this is going to be her husband's man cave. So I think this is just really neat. Like, love this. Okay. Now let's go to the other side of the house. Okay, I'm gonna go up the stairs. So we have a really big game area here that you can do a lot with. It's a really big size. So just another living space to have. And then have three more bedrooms upstairs that are all good sizes, not oversized, but definitely not like too small. A little nook area there. Another bedroom. And then bathroom for upstairs. I'm out of breath from running up and down the stairs. <laughs> but this is one of these homes that really is not in horrible condition. It needs some paint, right? And the listing agent told me that the sellers got a quote for $1,700 to paint all of downstairs. Um, so we may ask them for those funds because it doesn't seem like they're gonna actually paint it themselves. Um, and then, you know, according to Anthony, it's not a lot of like internal damage, you know, mechanical damage to the home other than whatever this leak issue is that's going on there and the dishwasher. So all in all, I feel like this is, this is good, good stuff. So Anthony should be sending us that inspection report within over the next 48 hours and we'll be good to go yippee hello happy october 18th it's a monday i'm about to hop on a call with jasmine we got her inspection report back the inspection that anthony did on saturday he actually sent it yesterday but he sent it like 5 6 p.m last night and i was with family so we're gonna go over it this morning and see what we want to ask for like i've mentioned the home has a lot of cosmetic stuff that needs to be done um, and just a few little simple things so hopefully this will be an easy negotiation period nobody's like too high on their horse over there or over here <laughs> and we'll just make it through option period good morning happy October 20th it's a Wednesday I think it's like eight something in the morning so we finally got a response from the sellers for Jasmine's home late last night. She sent it like 1037. I was already in bed. Um, it took them about a day and a half to respond. 
So we initially sent them a repair request with 18 different line items from the gutters being clogged to no insulation around a chimney flute. Um, there is um, a leak in the dining room, in the ceiling. Um, the GSCI plugs are not working. And I say GSCI plugs all the time. People get confused, but the outlets. But the GSCI ones are the ones that have the reset button on them, right? Um, simple fix. They're like $15, $20 to replace those things at like Home Depot Lowe's. Um, the cooling equipment needs just to be serviced. So like when the inspectors go out and look at cooling equipment and stuff, they, what they do is they set the temperature to a certain amount and then they see what it's actually blowing at. There is a standard differential that is okay and then there's a differential that's not okay. The difference between what the air condition was actually set at to what it's actually blowing at was about a 20 degree difference. So it just, it needs to be serviced. Um, the toilet is loose kind of from the floor, like the caulking and stuff. Water fixtures are loose and leaking. One of the sinks is draining slowly. Um, the dishwasher is just not functioning. We don't know if that's a GFCI issue or if that's just the dishwasher is just actually broken. Um, the middle range on the cooktop, it's a gas stove is not working um fence there's a lot of broken boards and just missing boards back there the air condition ducts and system and filters just need to be clean like you can look up and just it's like black around it just because they haven't been changed or cleaned in a long time um the water heater needed a catch pan um there is a pretty big hole in a closet door um, there's, remember y'all, there was a lot of cosmetic issues with this home that we haven't even touched on this repair sheet, but this hole was pretty massive. Um, on the listing that they, they said, um, well, actually I'm on the listing. At some point in time, the listing agent told me that they got a quote to get the first floor of the home painted for $1,700. So we asked for that credit. Then we also asked for the home to be professionally cleaned and for the carpet to be deep clean, shampooed, and deodorized. They have three dogs that have been living in that home. Um, I'm a dog lover, y'all. My dogs don't stink, though. <laughs> that home, um, yeah, it, it, it was a tough smell, right? So that's what we sent. What does, where is this? Oh, let me turn this way. That is what we sent. And this was the response. Our clients have gotten back to us and the response regarding your request is below. A lot of the items on your letter are mainly cosmetic issues, normal wear and tear on any home this age. Yes, but no. Holes in doors. Oh, I forgot to mention the, I keep skipping that one because, um, I didn't put a space, but the door leading to the primary bathroom in the primary room, you know, another a door has a big hole in it. Like somebody kicked the door, punched the door, a kid ran into the door. I don't know, but it's a big hole. So anyways, that's not normal wear and tear is why I'm even bringing that up. Um, she says the only item the sellers want to make sure gets addressed for the new buyers would be the current moisture found in the dining area. They are offering to give your buyer an additional $500 for this issue as they are unaware of what it could be from. The 5K that are they are already crediting your clients was them taking that into consideration that their home needs some TLC, which is why 5K was requested, which it was not. That's I never said that. Um, but if this works for you, your clients... If this works for you and your clients, please send the revi the revised amendment. So, so yes, right in the contract, the home is two sixty five. We asked for five thousand dollars back in closing costs. I'm not comfortable right here. So, we asked for five thousand dollars towards seller contributions. Whatever we decide to use that money for. Well, you don't really even get the actual money. You, they just take it off of the closing cost. So it's basically money that she has that she gets to keep pocketed or less that she pays at closing, whatever. 
But they also, in the contract, the buyer's also paying um, title policy, so which is about $1,600. So if you take that $1,600 away from the $5,000, that leaves us with, what, $3,400? The painting alone for downstairs is $1,700. The whole house really needs to be painted. And then all the rest of the cosmetic issues and everything else, like that is going, that it's not enough money. <laughs> Point blank period, it's not enough money. So them wanting to add an additional 500, still, it's just a, a dip in the bucket. And so for her to have said normal wear and tear, that's not true. Like, the dishwasher's not working. That's not normal wear and tear. That's broken. So, my thing always is, you know, if we can't agree on cosmetic things, then then somewhat fine. But the home needs to be fully functioning when my buyer moves in. Like, needs to be fully functioning. And it needs to be cleaned. So, our response was this. I just got off the phone with Jasmine. We went over everything. Um, I, I just read the email to her and she said she wasn't okay with that, which I wasn't either. So our response here is, thank you for your response. The buyer feels like 5000 is not enough considering they will be paying title policy an estimated $1,600. The buyer would only feel comfortable knowing that the following items are addressed before closing. Moisture in the dining room. The HVAC system needs to be serviced, which is the cooling system. The dishwasher needs to be repaired or replaced. Um, the primary bathroom door with the hole needs to be replaced, um, which we may be able to waver on if they, you know, if they come back correct. The cooktop needs to be serviced. It's five burners. We we need all five to be working, not just four. Um, and the home needs to be cleaned professionally, professionally cleaned and carpets cleaned. Nobody is moving into that house the way that it smells and, and you know, is dirty. Um, so then I took it upon myself to give the listing agent a few options. This, If the seller pays the title policy and has a property and carpet professionally cleaned, we'll be good with that. Um, or the seller can provide us um, for with $440 for a home warranty. One of the home warranty companies that I looked up, Super, which is a really good one, they have their simple home warranty plan that covers everything that is wrong with the house currently, plus more for $439 a year. So in contract, you can normally add in there that you want the seller to contribute a certain amount of money. Originally, we didn't ask for anything, but since they're coming back with all these rebuttals, now we're asking for them to provide us with $440 for the home warranty. Um, we still want to have the dishwasher repaired or replaced, and we still want this property cleaned from head to toe. Um, and then I also let her know that the seller could purchase their own home warranty and have these items addressed. The same company, Super, has a policy for people that currently have their homes listed, that they pay for that policy. They have these people come out and service whatever items, and then it is still transferable to the buyer for a year afterwards. So that's another option. So I sent her that, and then I just said to follow, because we don't want... The thing about negotiations is you have to be careful because sometimes people get, you know, a little attitudinal about their property and then say, you know, F it, I don't want to sell no more or whatever. So I just reassured her that the buyers really love the house and they will be moving from Florida and just want to have a functioning and clean home to move into. So that's that. Hopefully we get a good response, something that we can just agree on and move forward y'all yeah <laughs> all right y'all we got a response in 32 minutes this time <laughs> which is, is still crazy but it says the seller will pay $500 for home warranty for the buyer or give them a credit of 500 or hold on okay I'm back I had read it wrong the first time I had read and and it says or so um, they are willing to either give $500 towards a home warranty, which the home warranty um, that I told Jasmine about is 440 
or they'll give a $500 credit. However, that is it, is what she wrote. She says the home has already had a deep carpet cleaning on October 10th, which the carpet itself didn't look dirty, but the home smells. So my assumption was that the smell was in the carpet, but the smell can also just be in the wall. They do also still have furniture in that home. The home just needs to be aired out, right? And then she says the moisture issue, the seller doesn't want to deal with this, which is why they're willing to give a credit. The HVAC is working properly per buyer's inspector, which it works, but it's not, it's, well, remember we just talked about the differential, so whatever. She says the dishwasher is a cosmetic issue. I don't know where on earth why some would say a dishwasher not working is a cosmetic issue. Y'all tell me. Because I know there's a lot of people that literally just use their dishwasher as a drying rack. They don't actually use it. They don't run it. They don't. People. There's a lot of folks that just don't wash dishes via the dishwasher. I, I get it. But that doesn't mean that it's a cosmetic issue if it don't work. Like, that blew my mind, y'all. Blew it. And then she says the hole in the bathroom door is a cosmetic issue. And she says cooktop works per my seller. I will have her send you a photo of it on which, whatever. So, Jasmine has decided to take the $500 home warranty because the thing about the home warranty is it's like insurance, y'all. So, it will cover, let me just, let me, let me read to y'all really quickly what, um, this is super home warranty. Your new home is a big commitment. It's one of the largest purchases you'll ever make. And there's a lot more to owning a home than just moving in your stuff. This is where we can help. Of course, no one likes to think about things breaking down. But when they do, we're ready for that. We've all, we've also got maintenance covered. Everything from your reking, the locks in your new home, to cleaning the carpet. So we'll handle all the details from scheduling services to coordinating payments. Um, that's their little spiel. Um... We make managing your home easy. The super subscription covers repairs, replacements for systems, appliances, breakdowns, but that's only the beginning. So for the simple coverage, air conditioning system, heating system, major kitchen appliances, interior electrical system, interior plumbing, water heater, garage door opener, ceiling fan, central um, vacuum. Um, and then maintenance services. Our maintenance service keeps your home in top condition and prevents costly problems down the line. Pricing for maintenance services range from seventy five to one fifty. So just like insurance, you pay a copay. Um, here you pay a servicing fee, and then they come out and for some of the maintenance services they have is rekey. HVAC tune-up is what we need, right? There, there's the word. We need it tuned up. Um, pest control, termite treatment, carpet cleaning, window washing, gutter cleaning, power washing. These are all things that literally are on our inspection report. Dryer vent cleaning, TV, oh, TV mountain, lawn treatment. Um, so, yeah. So, but, okay, right? I've, I've talked enough about this. So, y'all see what a home warranty will do or help provide you with which which is great so we're going to get this home warranty um but we're still going to ask for them to clean the home I don't, I don't care what they say i don't care they're not just gonna move out and leave their dust and dirt behind That's hello good people happy thursday 21st of october Woo! this month yo this month, flying by, flying by. Anyways, um, just a couple of simple updates. Um, the sellers finally sent back the amendment this morning. I guess they just forgot to send it of the signed repairs amendment. So we agreed on them professionally cleaning the home because I stopped asking and I just put in the amendment like sign it. I don't want to talk about it no more. Y'all nasty if y'all don't think you should clean your home, but you're going to have to now because now it's on contract. Clean your house <laughs> and then the $500 towards home warranty for Jasmine. And then also yesterday I got a call from Brittany's lender and the appraisal came back at value, so for two hundred thousand, whoop whoop whoop, that's great. All right, got my got my driving life together over here. 
Um, so yeah, appraisal came back at value 200,000, but the appraisal is subject to them installing a new water heater. So, um, FHA, this is, this, and this is why I've said this before that, you know, conventional loans present better than FHA, especially VA and USDA loans because these are government subsidized loans are backed by the government so they expect to see things um in certain conditions right so appraisal went out did his appraiser and he says that the water heater isn't up to fha standards so now this isn't something that we asked for but this is something that has to be done for um the appraisal to go through and for us to be able to sell on the um to close on the home so now the sellers are going to have to provide um a new water heater tell their agent this morning he said great so i'm assuming you know there's no issues they're not gonna fight it because technically you can you can fight an appraisal appraisal value or just whatever else that the appraiser may say but he said cool so done all right that's all the updates. hello good people good day Today is October 26th. It's 11 a.m. And currently we are headed to go preview some more new construction. I like to do this just because I like to know what's out there. Like new construction is flying so quickly lately, y'all, that it's like the second you even find out it's there, it's already gone. So I'm going to go preview some new construction um see what's available for um current clients potential clients you know whatever just be knowledgeable so yesterday i spoke with britney's lender um whew, and there's currently two concerns um one is there's currently two concerns that both have to do with her you know getting that final approval that we need I think I gotta go back and look, but I think we did a 14 day um, buyer financing approval. So, yeah. So, the lender is one concerned about how many reserves she has. She was supposed to be using her 401k, but the loan amount that she would need from her 401k is more than her vested amount. So, because of that, they're not able to use the 401k. So now she needs um, more cash in her bank account. So working on that, not a lot more, a little bit more. So I think it's a doable amount. Um, and then also now with her debt to income, her, her dad pays her car note, right? Which is a blessing. <laughs> I wish I wish one of my parents would pay some time but note uh, so her dad pays her car note um, and so to help her debt to income out they are wanting and he's, he's always paid it so for the last 12 months he's been paying it so she's what they're trying to do is show that that's not a part of her debt since he actually pays it so the car note is in her name so they're requesting 12 months of bank statements from her father from the account that it comes from um so we are working <laughs> working on getting him to provide those um because if not and they have to put that debt you know back to her you know it it you know it, it may it may change up some things so uh, really holding my breath on this one here and hopefully um, hopefully it all works out for the best y'all okay y'all so here's the update of what is going on my, <laughs> I look crazy right now um, Jasmine we're supposed to be closing on Jasmine's house on the 12th currently um, the home has still not been appraised buyer financing contingency ends on the 4th which is next week Thursday so with that being said um, I called her lender yesterday to inquire about the appraisal for one to see if it was ordered because Jasmine had told me you know they requested the money and they she paid for it 
uh, like a week and a half ago maybe um, but even from then until up until yesterday I still hadn't heard anything you know, I still hadn't heard anything about the appraisal being scheduled you know usually there's some form of communication about that most times from the lender you know they'll let us know when they're scheduled to go out and when it's scheduled to be back in you know and I hadn't heard nothing from him y'all know how I feel about lenders they're really hit or miss um, and not saying that means that you know he's a bad lender but I like communication so called him and he was just like well yeah of course we ordered it like like I'm just supposed to just know that you did your job like I don't just know I so saw I'm double checking to make sure you did and so I followed up with okay well when is he going out like when is it scheduled he's like well I don't know about that why don't you know about that like why you know like appraisals take you want to at least give it a week or one week turnaround from the day that they go out and do the actual appraisal till them sending the appraisal report right seven days seven days so i text the listing agent yesterday i said hey you know did the appraiser reach out to you to schedule the appraisal appointment um, she said no. I was like, okay, great. So it was on my plans to call the lender back today, you know, to have a conversation. But before I got a chance to do that, the listing agent texted me and said the appraiser reached out and he has scheduled. Uh, hold on, y'all. This is Brittany's lender calling. So listing agent texted me today, said the appraisal has been scheduled for Tuesday. Um, but a financing contingency ends Thursday. So that's not a week, right? I just said it takes seven days. Like, and then it doesn't always, but you want to give yourself seven days. So I was like, well, dang, you know, now we're going to have to do an instant. Now we're going to have to do an amendment for the buyer contingency. I text the listing agent and I was like, hey, I'm going to send an amendment to extend the buyer financing contingency. Um, one week and same for the closing date now one week because it's delayed you know everything has a trickle effect and we may still potentially be able to close on time and all of that and this appraiser may turn around and get us back this appraisal you know in the nick of time but it's my responsibility to make sure that contingency dates are being met and if we can't meet them we're doing the proper steps to either get it amended or by God terminating contract so I think she's okay with like you know the um, the appraisal the listing agent seemed okay with the buyer financing extension um, but she was like but why do we need to extend the closing date and I said just you know we just erring on the, the, the cautious side of things over here like we just you never know and I don't want to keep doing these amendments so the thing about closing date amendment is it states on or before this specific date so if everything is good to go we can always close beforehand um just not after <laughs> so okay so that's that and now oh y'all i don't i don't know what's i don't know what's happening y'all this this is what's happening um now Brittany. Cameron, her lender's name is Cameron. Like him a lot. He's the one that just called. I just think, you know, when people when people irk me, I, I be extra nice to the ones that I really like and I thank them and I tell them why I'm thanking them and what I like about them. <laughs> so, so extra. But, uh, stay in your lane, homeboy. So, um, you know, like last week, we had a few things that were kind of up in the air trying to get her father's um, bank statements remember because he's paying the car note and we wanted to prove that um, her her year-to-date income because she was on maternity leave so it wasn't adding up to what her salary stated she made and something else um, so all of that has been taken care of except <laughs> her father's bank statements literally when I called Cameron first he answered and um, he was like, actually, I'm on a Zoom call at this moment with um, 
Mr. Washington, Brittany's father, trying to figure out these bank statements. And I was like, oh, we still haven't, been, like, that's not done. And the reason I was calling him one is because the listing agent sent an email asking if we had sent out the closing disclosure. All right, the closing disclosure has to be sent three business days before closing. We close on the fourth, but tomorrow is the weekend, it's a Friday, so it needs to be sent today for it to be, you know, within the three the three business days. Um, and he's asking for usually they don't really ask for it, but be, because the the sale of the purchase of their new home is contingent on the sale of their current home, they need to give their lender everything is a trickle trickle effect, y'all so they they need it right they need it to show that they're they're the home that they're going to be buying um that they're selling their current home and it's going to close and blah, blah 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 right so i was like okay well so something's going on he just needs to be able to provide his bank statements but he has some credit union that doesn't have his name on the bank statements or some some weirdness is going on so they're over there trying to figure that out but he i was like but is there anything else you know like i always feel like it's always something else something else you know oh we forgot this or you know something else he said no everything else is good we, sh we should be good to go to close on the fourth 